For Crema Media TV, I'm Sasha Lee Solomons. Joining me today is ASP Fire CEO Michael van Eckerk, and we'll be discussing prevention and protection as well as evacuation of fires under different circumstances. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Can we firstly discuss the greatest risk to businesses in terms of fires? A lot of companies think that they've got fire extinguishers and hose reels and um, sprinklers in place, um, but for them, detecting a fire and then notifying the occupants of a fire is actually the greatest risk. Um, without suitable means of detecting a fire before it starts growing and being able to respond to it means that you are going to cover some or experience some type of loss. Um, so even though sprinklers might go off, you've still got a fire before it goes off. Um, and what you need to try and do is make sure that you can get people out of the building as quickly as possible. A lot of businesses forget about the fact that they need to have means to get people out safely uh, and especially when it comes to disabled people. So one of the largest risks to businesses is the loss of life, mm -hmm. um, aside from the obvious things like losing a building or machinery or product or, or trucks or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. What are uh, some of the most important means of evacuation? Should there be different evacuation systems in place? Again, so once you've had a fire starting, you need to have two types of responses to a fire. The first is your, your fire marshals, people who've had active firefighting training, so that they can try and put the fire out manually before it grows to the point where you need to have some other intervention, an automatic system going off or even the fire brigade coming. Um, you know, fires grow initially very, very slowly and then they develop very, very rapidly. So if you can have the means of pinpointing a fire um, and the source of the fire accurately, you can get someone putting it out with a fire extinguisher before the fire causes much damage. Mm -hmm. uh, the second important thing is that bus businesses and um, offices and even warehouses fill up with smoke very rapidly once a fire starts. And people underestimate how quickly that happens. Um, there have been instances in nightclubs where there have been fires and these nightclubs have filled up with smoke in less than 90 seconds. So you can imagine an office environment filling with smoke as rapidly. So your danger there is not being able to get people out of the building before an office or warehouse or room fills up with smoke. Um, now there's two dangers, obviously the toxic gases mm -hmm. that people overcome by, but also the hot gas. So if you breathe in hot gas, you'll end up burning your lungs. And if you're breathing toxic gases within five breaths, you're probably going to be dead. And one of the other challenges we have is getting disabled folk out of buildings. The mobility disabled folk um, who can't walk as quickly or are confined to wheelchairs or need crutches. And if you don't consider them in your evacuation plan, um, you might leave someone behind who can really be hurt. Um, so it's important to consider your entire workforce and understanding how you're going to notify them and then allowing them the maximum time possible to get out of the building. And then making sure you've got safe means of escape. Um, stairwells, corridors, emergency evacuation doors, uh, and a lot of companies don't consider the fact that they need all of these aspects. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a multi-million rand fancy system. You can use manual air horns, uh, and as long as everybody's been trained on how to activate the system, and then also how to evacuate the building, you've got a very good probability of getting everybody out of the building safely and um, without any harm to them. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. That was Michael Fannikerk on fire protection and prevention as well as the importance of evacuation.